Okay, the warm-up today, oh, so seventh hour. If you have not picked up any papers yet, you need to pick up some papers. All right, the warm-up today makes you think outside the box. So, like, for number one, you've got to think of how can I rewrite 27 to be a power of three, and then how do you clean that up? Number two, if I need to evaluate log base 504, how can I rewrite that in some way? If I need to rewrite 4 squared to the 2x minus 3 power, how do I rewrite it? If I want to, wait a second, and then this number 4 is, if this is a condition, take a guess of what common log 2x is. I'm going to be around in a little bit. Substitute, please pause the video right now, and answers coming up. All right, I'm going to go over answers. Here we go. If I want to rewrite 27 to the 4x to be a power of 3, here's what happens. 27 can be rewritten as 3 to the 3rd power raised to the 4x. And now we have a power to a power. That rule is when you have a power to a power, you're going to multiply powers. So this is rewritten as 3 to the 12x power. Ladies and gents, I will never ask you to do this. This will never be a test question. But these are strategies that we're going to have to use for today's lesson. All right, if I need to evaluate log base 5 of 4, we're using the change of base formula. So I will never ask you, use the, or use the change of base formula to evaluate. Blah, blah. I never ask you that. You have to use the change of base formula to get a decimal. So let's recall. We had this rule of log base C of u is equal to common log of u divided by common log of c. Now, Katie, you're the only one that I walked by who had an answer for this. Number two. Um, I had um, 86. Out of curiosity, what did you use there? Uh, the calculator where you take log. I put log of 4 and then divided by log 5. Okay, and so you got approximately 0.86. Did you use um, your parentheses, right? Okay. Somebody, somebody check it. We, I only had one answer here. It says 0.86. We need verification. Okay, so then we're good. Simplify in the next problem. We're just going to practice how if I have a power to a power that's a binomial, I'm still going to distribute that power. So I'm going to take 2 times 2x and 2 times negative 3. We've got 4 to the 4x minus 6. We're going to, again, I never ask you this on a test. It's a strategy we need to use for a question that I ask you on the test. All right, okay. Uh, I didn't see any guesses on this one. We notice 10 to the common log is base 10, so 10 to the log base 10 undo each other. So we're left with 2x equals, well, 1,000. Because 10 to the third power is 1,000. Divide both sides by 2, we get x equal to 500. So I'm going to, this is what I call, uh, nobody else I don't know calls it, but I call it a hitchhiking problem because you've got to take your answer from one place and insert it into the next place. So I've got to use the 500 in the next position. So common log of 2 times 500. So common log of 1,000 is 3. So answer is 3. Now, we could have done this a little bit more quickly, or more quickly, quicker, should, should be my mouth. All right, we could have done this quicker. Notice how we have 10 to a power on both sides. So what we could do is zoom in on the powers. Notice how it says common log 2x needs to be equal to 3. And what are we trying to find? Common log 2x needs to be equal to 3. That's going to be a little fun fact in the next slide. Here we go. Okay, so maybe not the next slide. But uh, objective today, the objective is to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. This is the last lesson of your Algebra 2 life with me.
Get excited. Yes. I am actually kind of sad too, right? I'm actually going to miss your faces. Like every single, every single one of my students, I can honestly say I'm going to miss all of you. I've reached feeling. Okay, I'm done with feeling. Here we go. Objective. Let's solve exponential and logarithmic equations. One way to solve exponential equations is to use this property, that of two powers with the same base. Okay, so if we have the same base are equal, then their powers must be equal. Those exponents must be equal. That's what we were trying, or that's what I was trying to convey in your example four or in your problem four of your warm-up. That if you have the same base, we could just zoom in on the exponents, which is what this next property kind of says. So if you have base, uh, base to a power equals the same base to another power, we can then say that their powers are equal. On this example, so notice how we don't have the same base. We have 4 and 8. We have to get them to be the same base. So what we're going to have to do is rewrite 4, rewrite 8 in their most basic integer. So, so this is like the very first problem in the warm-up. We had to rewrite 27 as a power of 3. Let's rewrite 4 as its most basic integer, too. All right, so 4 is going to be rewritten as 2 squared to the 3x power. 8 is going to be written as 2 cubed to the x plus 1 power. And then the other two examples from the warm-up now fall into place, how we, we're going to have power to a power. <coughs> yeah. We got the same base? Yeah. So this is 2 squared to the 3x. We have same base? So when we take power to a power, we're going to multiply the powers and distribute if necessary. Now, I want us to know why we can just drop off the bases. There's actually a way we can do this. How do you undo an exponential function? To undo something squaring, you take the square root. So hold on. We've got to recognize to get the power by itself, I'm going to have to take the logarithm on both sides. So I'm going to have to take the logarithm base 2 on both sides. So, logarithm base 2. Why would I choose 2? Because that crosses Yeah, okay. So, log base 2 of 2 to a power, those operations undo each other. So, log base 2 of 2 undo each other. And I'm just left with the powers. This is why, in the warm-up, if we have the same base, we could just zoom in on the exponents. Because I can always undo both sides using that logarithm. I'm going to keep practicing that. All right? In homework, those of you who realize, hey, I'm just going to zoom in on the exponents, on homework, you can just do that. However, I'm going to keep showing this in notes. All right, then you do the algebra. Subtract 3x on both sides, divide by 1. We're going to check our answers. Making sure they work. So if I plug in 1, I get 4 to the 3 times 1 power, which is 4 cubed. We're looking at 64. We've got to ask ourselves, does that equal 8 to the 1 plus 1? So it does equal 64. It checks out. We're going to practice checking our answer. Because now that we're into logarithms, sometimes we may get a no solution. They may not check out. All right. In the next one, again, we don't have the same base, so let's write, rewrite 4 and rewrite 32 to be base 2. Two numbers? 32. How many 2s does it take? Five. Five of them. And then power to a power. So I'm going to show how.
how if I have two to a power, or if I expo if I need to figure out what that power is, I'm going to take log base two on both sides. Now the reason why I'm choosing two is because two is the base. So log base two on both sides. So log base 2 of 2 undo each other. It's like a silent movie. I'm just doing the algebra, and then I'm going to check it. So let's check our answer. Ladies and gents, 4 to the 2 times 5 power is 4 to the 10th. If I change the 4 to be a base of 2, 4 is 2 squared raised to the 10th power, we get 2 to the 20th power. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't know if our calculator can do 4 to the 10th power. It can? It can? It's, it's just uber big. Yeah. I don't want to deal with that. Okay, now, 32 to the 5 minus 1 power is 4. Let's make some sense of this. 32 is 2 to the 5th power raised to the 4th power. So wait, 5 times 4, we get another 2 to the 20th power. So I could check these even without a calculator. It is possible. They do check. Okay, note, when it is not, okay, when we can't get both sides to be the same base in any way, right? And you see these examples. When we cannot rewrite both sides to have the same base, we're going to have to use that logarithm rule. We're going to have to take the logarithm of both sides. And when we take the logarithm of both sides, we're going to have to use the specific base that is in the problem. So if I notice that the base is 5, I'll use base 5. If I notice that the base is 2, I'm going to use base 2. If I notice that the base is 3, I mean, you get it. Okay. So in the next example, I see 2 to the x equals 7. I cannot rewrite that 7 to be a base of 2. So it should be a signal to me that I'm going to take log base 2 on both sides. So taking log base 2 on both sides. So log base 2 of 2 undo each other. And that x is going to be equal to log base 2 of 7. Depending on the directions, depends on, do we take this a step further? If the directions say, give me the exact answer, we're done. If the, if the directions say, round your answer to the nearest thousandth, that's whenever you need to put it in your calculator. So let's go through both cases in case. All right, so com, or common log 7 divided by common log Two, make yourself go through that motion. Common log, common log of seven divided by common log two. This was in our warm up, that change of base formula. What are we getting? 2.81, and I want this thousandth, so I want three decimals. In warm up, we only went to two, but let's go to three. Eight one zero, or is it eight zero? Eight zero seven. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, ladies and gents, let's do the same thing to this one. I cannot rewrite eighteen to be a power of five. So because of that, we're going to take log base five of both sides, and we'll probably get a decimal. So, log base 5 of 5 undo each other. If I'm asked for the exact answer, I'm done here. However, let's also do the change of base. Make yourself go through that change of base. 1.795. Yes, it would. 
I need verification. All right. Now, I'm going to erase and show you another way to do this problem because some of you really like to know all the ways. Here we go. That same problem, I could have just rewritten in logarithmic form. Yesterday, we traveled back to the definition of a logarithm. Log base B of a number is the power. That can be rewritten as the exponential form based to what power is the number. All right. We wrote that down. That's the definition of a logarithm. That means I can write a logarithm in exponential form or something in exponential form into a logarithm. So how could I rewrite this in a logarithm? I start out with writing log using the base, and that's 5, of 18 equals x. It immediately puts it in the answer form. So just by rewriting this, using the definition of a logarithm, I get the answer. The same case could have been for the previous example. Both ways work. The reason why I like this, oh, take the log, base, whatever, on both sides, is because that works every single time. Every single time. If I go back to the previous slide, I cannot rewrite these in logarithmic form and be as successful as our previous strategy. So taking the logarithm on both sides is helpful. Here we go. Let's do difficult ones. Woo -woo. We are going to start off by subtracting four. One day, you all will be as excited about this stuff as I am. One day, one day. It's a coming. Don't know when, but it's a coming. All right. I cannot rewrite 17 to be in a form of 10. So because of that, I'm going to take the logarithm of that base 10 on both sides. So common log. Log base 10. So I can take common log or log base 10 of 17. Since we're still learning the concept, I'm going to keep writing the base. We recognize that on the left side, I'm just left with the exponent, 2x minus 3. But on the right side, I'm going to have to immediately use my calculator. So log base 10 of 17, I can actually just hit my common log button, 17. But I need this. 1.230. I'm going to keep going with it unless I hear otherwise. So from this point, I'm going to add 3 and then divide by 2. I zoom through the algebra. In the next problem, we subtract 8 right away. Subtract 8 right away. And notice that I can't, okay, so you always check, can I get the same base? If I can get the same base on both sides, it makes the problem a lot easier. But because 27 cannot be rewritten in a form of 10, I move on to take the logarithm on base 10 on both sides. So log base 10 of 10 undo each other. I'm left with that exponent, but I don't know what that approximation is. Okay. Uh, it's yep. Okay, so we've got verification. Now, I subtract 4 and divide by 5. I don't know if I can do this in my head. Negative. Oh, oh, oh. We've got a whole number. You said 569, true? Great. Please divide that by 5 so I don't have to embarrass myself anymore. And we're just going to go to the thousandth place. So I'm just going to say negative 0.514. Oh, 
Okay, so to solve logarithms, to solve a logarithmic equation, now to undo logarithms, well, first off, we're going to use this particular property that I'm about to show you only with logarithms on both sides with the same base. They have to have the same base in order to do this. <clears throat> they have to have the same base. So if I see log base B of X equals the logarithm base B of Y. So if, they're, if I don't know what their arguments are, as long as they have log base B, I can set their arguments equal to each other. But here's the situation. When I, oops, sorry. When I'm solving logarithmic equations, I need to recognize that I've got to check my solutions. Um, if we do not check our solution, or my bad, let me rephrase this. It, because our domain gets restricted with a logarithm, we've got that vertical asymptote which tells us, hey, wait a second, something's undefined here. We've got to check our solutions because sometimes we're going to get an algebraic solution that technically is not a solution. All right. So how do you undo a logarithm? How do we undo a logarithm? So to undo these logarithms on both sides, we're going to take each side to be a power of three. So both of these power, or sorry, so both of these sides are now going to be looked at as exponents. And then three to the log base three. Oh! Oh! Hold on, freeze. We need parentheses. They, there were typos. I forgot to tell you about the typos. But, Oh, wow. It just, oh, bleh. Yes. Okay, put in parentheses. So, three to the log base three. Undo each other. And I'm left with the exponent 5x minus 1 equals x plus 7. Because we inserted those parentheses because those were typos. So... We've got to check this, though. So starting over, I'm going to check log base 3 of 5 times 2 minus 1. And I'm going to ask myself, is it going to be equal to log base 3 of 2 plus 7? I put a 2 anywhere I see where the x is. This is the check. Oh, yeah. On your guided notes, the check part is off to the right. So you ask yourself, log base 3 of, well, 10 minus 1, we're looking at 9. Is that the same as log base 3 of, hey, hey, 9. So we really don't need a calculator. Can we ask ourselves what integer this would actually end up being? Log base 3 of 9, 3 to what power gets us 9? It's 2. So this actually turns out to be 2 equals 2. This was not the no solution. It's a common, though. So, we got our solution. Next problem. Insert parentheses. It's a typo. Insert parentheses, please. We have a typo. We're going to insert parentheses. So, because we have log base 4, we're going to raise both sides to be an exponent of 4. After you raise both sides to be a power of 4, 4 to the log base 4, undo each other, leaving us with the exponents and the algebra left to do. It's going to be a silent movie. I'm just going to do the algebra. Check your answer with the one that I get after you do. Just because we get a negative answer does not mean we have a no solution. I just want us to recognize this. Just because we got a negative answer does not mean that we have a no solution. We've got to check our answers. Sometimes negative solutions still work. All right. So log base 4 of negative 2 plus 3, is that going to be the same as log base 4 
of 8 times negative 2 plus 17. So log base 4 of 1, is that the same as log base 4 of, well, wait a second, negative 16 plus 17? So we see that the expressions are equivalent. Do we actually know what log base 4 of 1 is? It's 0. Log base 4 of 1 is always 0. So it does check out. Negative 2 works. This, we still haven't gotten to our no solution. It's coming, just not this one. All right. So when it's not convenient to write both sides of the equation as logarithmic expressions with the same base, we're still going to have to, they call it exponentiate each side. It's called exponentiate, meaning raise each side. Hold on, exponentiate. When you raise each side to be an exponent, that's what it means. So if you need to put a little tidbit off to the side of your notes, this is where you take ownership of your notes. If you don't understand what exponentiate means, you raise each side to become the exponent. So if x equals y, then we're going to raise each side to be the same base to that power. I don't know if I said that right. Raise each side to be the power of that base. Okay, and we're going to pick... Raise each side to be a power of the base you choose. And we're going to strategically choose this base to match the base in the logarithm. All right. Let's do an example of this. I think we're only going to get to one example of these, and then we'll do the next three come Monday. All right. Notice how I have log base 5 of an expression equal to a number. What we're going to have to do is exponentiate, meaning raise both sides to be a power of a specific base. What base would be the most strategic? 5. So I'm going to raise each side to be a power of 5. So I undo the logarithm. I get 3x plus 1 equals 25. And then I do the algebra. Log base 5 of 3 times 8 plus 1. We've got to ask ourselves, is that actually going to be 2? So log base 5, well, 3 times 8 plus 1 does get us 25. Ask ourselves, is that going to be 2? So 5 to the second power, is that 25? Checks out. So what's next Next week, Monday, we're going to finish these notes. You can already see the homework, or if you want to practice it over the weekend, I don't care, you technically don't have homework yet. Um, but anyway, we can definitely do 26 through 34 on our homework. We could, we, you actually have the skills to do a lot of them if you want to try them. But no homework over the weekend. Let's uh, see you Monday.